Hello and welcome to our joint event hosted by Roomba Community together with the IPAM Masters called Business Analysis, Learning Press and Growth within IPAM. My name is Maria and I am a business analyst at IPAM, specifically working within a healthcare domain. Apart from my project activities, I'm also involved in several non-project ones that are aimed at reaching out to our external folk, you guys as well. Now, um, enough about me, as I am not the keynote speaker today. It is my honor to present to you Andrei Kornitsky. Well, hello. Hello. <laughs> Andriy kick-started his professional journey by pursuing a degree in system analysis at a tech university here in Ukraine. Ever since, he has been forging his career both in information systems development and teaching students how to become system analysts. His in-depth understanding of information technologies found a noted accomplishment when he successfully defended his doctoral thesis at Polytechnical Warsaw. Politechnika Warszawska, I apologize, in 2003. His career took an exciting leap in 2010 when he, when he transitioned to industrial IT development as a business analyst. During his stay in the US, he significantly contributed to the development of healthcare systems. Andriy's international experience got richly enhanced by his tenure at the European Commission IT department in Brussels where he engaged with art and culture from a digital transformation perspective. At EPAM, he grew professionally, ascending to the role of a chief business analyst. His portfolio encompasses a wide array of successful projects across diverse dom domains, such as healthcare, telecommunications, and governmental regulations and control. Beyond his technical contributions, Andriy is a passionate mentor, guiding other enthusiastic minds in their professional journey within EPAM. Wow, it's not the first time that I read all this, but I'm still impressed. Welcome, Andriy. Welcome. And now that everyone knows who we are, let's also briefly describe why we actually gathered here today. While we are all aware that there are great many roles in IT, the one that we would like to dive deeper into today has become quite popular and, if I may, quite trendy over the past couple of years. So Andri, my question to you, how would you describe to our viewers what business analysis actually is? Okay, Maria, uh, before we start talking about uh, today's topic, let's recall the two things that will be very uh, useful for understanding what business analysis is. The first thing is that there are a lot of different analysis. So you can uh, analyze uh, internal organization or external organization. You can uh, investigate markets. You can investigate uh, different types of uh, everything that's around the company or inside it. This is the first thing. The second thing is that there are some people in every organization and companies that uh, take decisions. So they are called decision makers. And all these types of uh, investigations and research are for them to mm -hmm. take a ground decision for the benefits of this organization. So let's take, for example, the... Uh, retail company and uh, this company can have several business units and it might have the IT departments and so they decided I mean the company decided to grow their year income so here come the uh, folks from these business units perhaps with the uh, business analysts and they start investigation what should be changed to gain this to gain that goal. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, those changes very roughly are our business requirements. And we have this uh, uh, IT folks, and they perhaps will start coding something as the part of this uh, solution, but they don't understand the business requirements. So here uh, comes the uh, 
business analysts who can translate all these complicated business things to the language of the uh, IT guys, so they will understand what they should uh, they should create. So having this said, now we can uh, focus on what really business ana analysis is. So I would say it's a structured approach to understand, define, and um, address very complex business issues by uh, uh, identifying the needs, uh, evaluating potential solutions, or suggesting and suggesting the best course of action. So the aim is uh, set objectives for those uh, decision makers to take advantage of opportunities and overcome challenges that uh, the organization faced. So in the heart of business analysis li lies the uh, interaction between business analysts and a lot of different stakeholders yeah. with, with, with whom they need to communicate on an everyday basis. And this involves uh, requirements gathering, documentation, validation, uh, and management. So business analysts use different types of tools, techniques to understand the current state, the future desired state, and uh, what changes should be done to, to get them. Oh. So this is briefly what business anal analysis okay. is. That explains a lot. But would you say that business analysis was always on its own or did it somehow evolve from the systems analysis or any other conjunct conjuncted sphere? Uh, you see, uh, it was a, a long time ago, perhaps in uh, 1950s, 1960s and 1970s mm -hmm. when uh, information technologies appeared and grows, and uh, it uh, increasingly uh, appeared in the uh, environment of uh, corporation in the United States. And, and these corporations, banks and corporations, they uh, try to transit their manual uh, operations to some computer-based uh, processes. And these shift created the uh, uh, demand for the folks who can understand the uh, very uh, hard to understand computer computer uh, and uh, information technology and uh, to, to know and to uh, comprehend the business requirements. So and the process. Mm -hmm. uh, two distinct um, professions appeared at the time. They called uh, business consultants and uh, system analysts. Mm -hmm. So the first, the first one, they uh, focused on the uh, organization operations and trying to find the uh, way how to make these operations more effective and guiding the companies to the better management of the, their processes and uh, system analysts in their turn. They uh, try to do this by introducing the information technologies. So business anal analysis have the roots in those two disciplines. And uh, even when the business uh, analysis as a term wasn't widely introduced into the, uh, into, into the market, they already have the, uh, their foundation at that time. So, but at the end of the last century, uh, we experienced the uh, tremendous uh, uh, achievement in, in computer science and information technologies. And this uh, further enforcing the, the need of such guys who can, uh, who can understand business and who can understand uh, Information technologies. So, and those and these guys are business analysts. So, as a result, <laughs> as a result. So, as a result, in 2003, uh, Institute of uh, International Institute of Business Analysis was established, and very briefly, they created uh, an issue. No, they <laughs> created. For the they created and issued the business analysis book of knowledge, 
that uh, uh, has become the industry standard reference, having all this guidance, uh, best practices, tools, yeah. and, uh, and other things. Okay, but how would you describe the change? How would you describe the modern business analysis as it is today and the role it occupies in the product and service development? So you see, um, some times ago, business analysts perhaps uh, found, found themselves uh, working on the projects where the uh, computer systems were part of the solutions, but now they can uh, they can find themselves uh, different different projects. They can uh, improve processes. They can change organization. They can uh, plan some strategy of the companies, or they can develop policy. For example, uh, let's take again this example with retail company. Let's say they are facing the. Uh, mm, that the customer orders are processed very lonely. So uh, business handlers can analyze processes and uh, recommend some streamlining steps to automate these tedious tasks, and uh, including retraining staff, etc. So uh, when we're talking about the organizational set, uh, changes, let's say the uh, IT company can uh, face the uh, or struggling with the communication between development team and operational team. Mm -hmm. So business analysts again can help them to uh, implement a DevOps approach, uh, retrain teams, um, promote promote culture for open communication, and uh, shared responsibilities between them. And, and even this strategic planning, a lot of us working, are working for the startups and uh, some of them can uh, help them to create their vision for the, for the uh, broader the market share, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Now, some say that many can wear a BA hat, as we call it. Others cannot imagine a complicated project's successful completion without highly skilled and actually mature BA on it. What values does a business analyst bring to the team that makes his role unique and are business analysts irreplaceable when it comes to overall project success? Okay, I would uh, break down your question into two parts. What value business analysts can bring to the organization and what yes and what uh value they can bring to the to the uh development team okay makes sense yeah uh, so uh based on my previous uh explanation so mm -hmm. business analysts they uh they take a unique position within the organization they they uh bridge the gap between business requirements or business folks and uh Technology solutions or uh, dev developer, <laughs> yeah, developers. <laughs> so they, they bridge the gap. Then they 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 can recommend uh, comprehensive solutions. So that's their job, mm -hmm. creating uh, uh, different types of documents and bringing here with, in this solution a holistic view, because they they perhaps the the only guys uh, on the project who can who can analyze and understand the whole picture and different parts of organization, uh, structure, systems, people, processes, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, then they allow uh, our project owners uh, for see project outcomes, even before we, we, we get them by creating this solution and uh, computerized system. True. Uh, yep. And uh, again, they facilitate the effective communication, promoting this collaboration and consensus. We all know that we should keep all the involved involved uh, stakeholders uh, focused on the uh, achievement of the of the project, and uh, that's the very that's goal. very important. Mm -hmm. Yep. Then they can uh, 
improve project estimation by gathering and documenting and validating clear requirements. And based on this, uh, the budget owners can uh, have a clear picture uh, how to invest their money mm -hmm. and uh, draw, uh, draw the um, phases, et cetera, et cetera. And then they as well can uh, can reduce risks, uh, budget budget risk and other types of risks, because they uh, they try to proactively uh, try to uh, see or foresee the, the these risks and uh, mitigate them, and or propose the ways to mitigate those risks for the for the benefit of the projects. And uh, along with this, they increase the customer satisfaction because uh, we, we all work to deliver the user-centric design. And uh, the next thing is that um, they uh, increase the return on investment. Yeah. Because they propose th their solutions th uh, with uh, involving information technologies that are the best for the for the organization. As regarding the team, they, uh, I mean, business analysts work closely with the team, in, in ensuring successful technology implementation, because they oversee that systems and uh, processes align with different requirements. They try to uh, minimize confusion and misinterpretation and reduce likelihood of rework of the team because nobody wants to do the same <laughs> thing twice. Nobody likes it, twice. for sure. Yes, and uh, business analysts do this by uh, creating uh, clear and uh, communicating clear, clear requirements so everyone will understand what they should do to achieve this, to achieve these goals. And they, they help the developers to focus on their job because they uh, they help product owners, whatever, to uh, prioritize the features, so everyone is focused, and uh, we can we can plan, and we can do our best uh, for the for the in the development. They prevent the project creep or feature creep by managing the the scope effectively, mm -hmm. and they enhance the product uh, quality. Working closely with quality assurance team as well. So with everyone, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. everyone. Okay. Um, now that we've discovered how important and ir irreplaceable VBAs are on any given project, right? Um, let's explore a bit more on what makes any given professional a perfect candidate for the role of a business analyst. What skills are essential to develop if you aspire to become not just a good BA, but a great one. And what can actually contribute to you becoming one of the most valuable players of your team? Uh, I would say the, 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 the most important trait of the business analyst is curiosity. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's along with critical thinking. Uh, because this curiosity let you, uh, lets you understand uh, the problem, the needs of the uh, the stakeholders you're working with, and you shouldn't be afraid to ask questions. Because uh, when you are the only person in the room uh, with hands up, when mm -hmm. the, the, the uh, lecturer asks for question, so you are fit for to be the business analyst. Because curiosity is the main point. Even if you know the subject matter, mm -hmm. you still should ask questions because you. Uh, deep your un understanding and you widen your uh, you horizons. You always learn more. Yes, you yeah. learn more. Then communication is an integral part of everything in this business analyst. So you should be, to be a great business analyst, you should uh, you should do it well. So you should uh, develop strong uh, written and verbal uh, communication to communicate your ideas or ideas of the business folk to developer, developers or developers will ask you what to do and you get back to the business, so you should communicate effectively. So you, you, it's a very important thing to, to have this um, ability. Then 
the, the third point as most important, I believe, is the, uh, the ability to see the big picture. Mm -hmm. So, um, if you are in the uh, Museo Orsay in Paris and you you, uh, you uh, get closer to the some impressionist uh, paintings, uh, what you see, you you will see only the uh, brush strokes. Yeah. <laughs> but when you move some step away, you will see this uh, masterpieces of Dugao or Monet. The same sure. is with the uh, with the business analysis on the project. Because even if you work on the project, you should be able to step away from your project to to see the whole picture, the place of your project within the organization, how it fits with other projects for the benefits of the of the company. So uh, and perhaps you'll be the only one uh, in the in, in the team or in the project oh, and knowing what's <laughs> happening <laughs> what's happening and to see this uh, or to, to to have this uh, close or uh, macro view of the of the whole situation then to be a great business analyst you should have a large business analyst uh, toolkits because when you have a large toolkit then you know what uh, tools should be applied to what things. Mm -hmm. For example, if you are asked or your task is to analyze some uh, information and create an information model, perhaps the, the best thing is to apply um, entity relational diagram or class diagram yeah. and, and not uh, other types of diagrams. Then when the uh, product owners just or decision makers just want to uh, to know the nuts and bolts of the project so you should be able to uh, deliver the um, business case so then the next thing i believe it's uh, adaptability and flexibility and here when i'm talking about the flexibility it's uh, your uh, um, attitude to the change in, in, on the project because it's not about when uh, whether the changes happened it's when they happen so mm -hmm. we all in the very uh, dynamic world so the scope can change so the uh, delivery days can change everything can ch every uh, every day so you should be able to to uh, reflect to these changes to adapt quickly because uh, the quicker you adapt to these changes and the, the more flexible you'll be, the, uh, the more time you will have to reorganize your work and to lead or steer the team to the, uh, to, to the other goals of the project. Then the next thing is uh, perhaps time management and information organization. Because when you ask not only pro project managers, but a good business analyst and asked when your analysis has finished mm -hmm. they they will answer you never but it's not the case because your job should be done and that's uh, involves your great time scheduling and time management then you'll be going to work with different types of stakeholders there are a lot of folks around you you uh, get the information from them and you, you should know, you should keep this information at hand and then know who supplied this information, how it get to you, etc. Then the last but not least things uh, is a domain knowledge. Mm -hmm. you, should, you should obtain the more the better. Then technical knowledge, you should always improve your uh, understanding of different modern technologies, UML, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then you should uh, strengthen your ability to deliver uh, winning presentations. So I, I'm talking about the presentation skill because you're you're going to work with different types of stakeholders, and you should deliver the uh, exact information to exact people. So mm -hmm. you 
the information or even let's take for example diagrams okay the, the diagrams you presented to the development team you shouldn't you shouldn't uh, present them to the uh, decision makers it should be simplified or presented in uh, some and um, understandable um, understandable way. yes yes and this is mm -hmm. a skill you should uh, uh, work on them then project management as well you should acquire knowledge because you can work not in IT, but in the uh, different projects, because now mm -hmm. it's everything around us are projects. So yeah. you, you see all these project mythologies, and you can can gain knowledge about them. Then be good with risk management, with different types of uh, identifying risks, mm -hmm. uh, uh, different types how we should react to this risk, etc. And then continuous learning. Perhaps it's a uh, the the last most important thing. So you, you should be committing to ongoing professional development. Here uh, I would agree yeah. 100% because I believe that if you're not um, constantly learning, constantly evolving and being around new knowledge, you're not growing, yeah. you're not adapting and we need to adapt to change as quickly as possible. And I'm not talking only about development here, about an actual human being, because things change quicker than the seasons do. So this is something is that is like kind of on the line of adaptability and constant, constant learning, the process of constant learning. Um, a quick break, just as a kind reminder that uh, for anyone who has any questions on everything we're discussing right now, or you have any concerns or things you would like to share, we would love to see them in the chat. So do address those and we will gladly answer them in the QA session. Now, moving on. While we are often taught that nothing is impossible, that we can achieve anything through hard work, dedication, constant self-motivation, there is one one big enemy to every success story, and that is called fear. Now, and this is actually where I would really like to share a piece of my life story, uh, because I am what they call in IT a switcher. So I come from a completely different background. I actually did a master's in international relations. Then I did a master's in international law. Then I did a PhD degree in global politics. And here I am doing business analysis. So how did, did actually that happen? And on the top of that education, um, I was a teacher, an English teacher that turned into a CEO of a company that was a chain of language schools across half of the country, right? And then all of a sudden I decided that this is not enough, that I want to switch, I want to do something else. Of course I was scared because it was not something I majored in, right? And I was like, I don't know where to dig, where to start, where to go. And um, it took me a lot of gut, but I started researching and that's how I actually ended up at EPAM Business Analysis Laboratory. And this is where my journey started, right? And um, I would say that if it weren't for um, overcoming that fear, if it weren't for hard work for during four to six months, I think, of the laboratory, the whole um, set of phases you had to go through up until my first project, I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be as happy and um, content with my current job and my, I wouldn't call it a job. Uh, it's more of a kind of <laughs> an emerge of a lifestyle and um, dedication, let's call it this way. But um, just my message is that just overstep that fear, start learning, start growing and just do it. Now, um, I would also like to say that, was it scary? Definitely. Was it difficult at times? Was it worth it? Absolutely. Andri, I am also sure that you can share a story or two about people who were also switchers and how through leveraging their formerly acquired skills and knowledge that were not AT specific, if I may call it this way, um, how it helped them uh, land their dream job. Uh, they went they won't be so inspiring and motivating as yours. Mine was short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, what come to my mind? Uh, for example, my brother. He he was a full stack developer for a long time, mm -hmm. and uh, during the uh, 
his job, he found it rewarding to uh, communicate directly with the with the customers, with the future users of, of the uh, development system. Mm -hmm. And um, the company noticed this trait of him and they uh, promoted him to be a technical consultant. So he traveled around the Europe uh, consulting uh, clients, uh, gathering their requirements and then implementing them in the, in the code and leading other part of the team. And, um, but later he, he learned that and understand that uh, it's not enough for him and uh, greater engagement with the customers um, will suit him better. So he uh, passed some uh, business analysis courses and then uh, secured a, a great job in an IT company. Uh, how, how much time did it take him? Because for me personally, if I just may interrupt uh, briefly that story, it took about what? Uh, okay, so it took about ten months getting into an actual project, which is a very fast track, as I was told. Because I mean, from the decision up until the first um, contract, mm -hmm. if, if we may call, if we may call it this way. So it was first um, to find the courses, the proper courses. No, first was to actually find what you want to do. For me, it was business analysis because I had two skills, working with people, a lot of people, a lot of communication, right? So that's the first one. And then the second one was English. I was like, okay, where could I go where I could start with English and learn in English and kind of grow? And that was business analysis for me, right? And I went to a couple of events where they spoke about, um, this was actually also in eFamily Land, there was IT for non-IT. And they spoke about QA and BA. I was like, QA, definitely not for me. With all due respect, I could not sit still for that long and be that patient. But business analysis was something that kind of, it was a spark for me. I was inspired. So from that point, from that um, webinar that I saw, it, it took me an application to the lab. It took me a month of waiting if I'm in or out, if they're going to call me or not because we submitted the CV. Then we went into um, the selection also the second phase of the lab where we had to study the materials on our own, which was a lot. We had to read a lot and every actually skill set that you described today was covered on a very high level, of course, but it was like introduct introductory um, information if I may, covering kind of uh, babble, but on a very high level, then you had to pass the test. Then you were in laboratory officially, and then you had, uh, we had a mock project that we had to do. And only then, after you completed it, you were sitting there and waiting, okay, did I do good? Will they invite me? So sorry for this oh, speech, but anyhow, <laughs> how long did it take, Oleg? Uh, you see, uh, here's... Uh track, I would say, changing the uh, uh, his job, I, I would say it was more natural mm -hmm. because he, he uh, was in IT and he was involved in all these things and he practiced it. all the business and system analysis uh, functions during his, his job. Lucky him. Yes. It's, I had it's no only, idea. It's like a, just a natural track because uh, a lot of business analysts can uh, come to the profession from other branches in IT. Mm -hmm. And perhaps it's uh, the, the easiest way for these people. But as well, they can come to business analysis, IT business analysis from, from the business. And it might take uh, longer. It will. Yes. <laughs> Most likely. For, for example, uh, there, are, there are a lot of persons in healthcare, especially in the United States, when they switched from the uh, being professionals for a long of time, mm -hmm. for decades, especially nurses. They switched nurses. to, they switched to, uh, to IT because mm -hmm. they, at some, at some point, they, they understand that their uh, domain knowledge and their uh, uh, intrinsical uh, ability to notice what will be good for the folk like them uh, in using all these cumbersome systems they are 
uh, working with. So mm -hmm. having this in mind, they uh, switch to the business analysis and uh, they as well pa passed all these um, uh, steps that you described because it's not that easy, but their, their main value for the uh, IT companies that um, employ them is their domain knowledge. And having this, they uh, they uh, become a great business analysts, and I and I've met a lot of uh, such people, and I worked with them, and uh, they they are great. That's quite interesting. I've never heard about switching like that. I've heard switching from banking, switching from, as you said, business, switching from management, as was my case, but nurse switching to so that's amazing. That's a, actually it's quite inspiring. Um, now. Well, there are great many paths, right, that we've discussed you can take to embark on your business analysis journey. Uh, for instance, as a BA lab in my case, or from the domain, as you described the nurses, or from the inner kitchen, as you described with your brother. Um, it can be quite overwhelming and turbulent, right, when you start all of this. Um, if you don't, especially if you don't know where to start, which was for me the biggest stress. I didn't know where to start and what's what I should start studying, reading, watching, doing, whom should I talk to. Um, so Andri, as a definite expert, I'm proudly saying that, <laughs> in both business analysis and education, what are your recommendations on how are aspiring students or people who want to switch, um, how do they start? How do they um, become a business analyst? Uh, I, I would recommend firstly research the role of business analysts. So it can be go to the LinkedIn, yeah. search, <laughs> search for the um, job advertisements and uh, in your country or some in European countries or in the uh, North America to see the differences and uh, write down the job description, the requested skills yeah. and uh, then read several books or just go to the YouTube and uh, find the um, introduction to business analysis and having this in your in your head just uh, dive deeper and deeper just uh, research your role so having this list of all necessary skills and uh, uh, and trade that you should possess being a, a good business analyst reflect your previous experience even starting from the university what you had been taught at the uh, lectures, perhaps you've been taught UML databases, etc. What is applicable? <laughs> what is applicable? Then, then perhaps you you have been involved in the different projects, so you can uh, remember the all these methodologies you, that you apply in these projects. So reflect your um, past, and then again, mm -hmm. uh, uh, jot it down. Yep. <laughs> to, to compare with the uh, with what, what with is the necessary, what are the requirements. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, we are talking about IT business analysis. In our case, uh, you should evaluate your technical skills. What you what you know. Uh, what types of diagrams, cloud technology. Uh, Etc. The fundamentals so, of AI and prompt engineering that are required <laughs> right now. That's true. Yes, exactly. So just evaluate the technical skill again. Write it down and compare with uh, what what uh, is required. Then assess your transferable skills because I believe every every professional in their branch they already have something that. Uh, not successful, but just uh, perhaps starting business analysts or aspiring business analysts. Uh, should have, and you already have this, uh, perhaps critical thinking, uh, time management, or, mm -hmm. or, or, or other different tra traits, so you already can have them. And then having all these lists, you should uh, address your skill gaps. And uh, by addressing skill gaps, I mean that you should create a plan what you should learn what your gaps are what your gaps are what should what should you should learn and how 
to uh, to fill these gaps. Perhaps uh, different types of uh, courses, perhaps different types of schools, books. Um, they can be payable or free. So you just need to find them and put in your plan with with definite deadlines. And having this, you'll be uh, you'll be able to answer your question. Are you suitable to uh, for this profession yeah. or not? Okay, but um, what other resources apart from books, courses, LinkedIn stalking, <laughs> and other uh, typical study materials would you recommend to the young apprentices of business analysis so that they can A, learn faster, and B, and which is more, more important, learn, no, not learn, acquire more practical experience, not being yet on a project. Okay, so you you should build a certain mindset mm -hmm. if you want to change to this profession, and uh, you should uh, gain relevant experience, even uh, even on your job, through opportunities in your project or in your position with side projects or just. Uh, helping your team with your new required knowledge, then you should stay updated with industrial trends. Again, mm -hmm. uh, this will help you to remain competitive in your uh, in, in the job market. But uh, mm, seeing different types of uh, videos, reading reading uh, books. And following the uh, some guides from this profession, you 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 will be uh, achieving these these goals. And uh, create create some network around you to to get this mindset with, with professionals in the BA field. Perhaps uh, at your uh, company you have BA, so you should you should communicate with them, talk with them, uh, spend coffee time with them. Talking Get to about, the office once talking a week. about, uh, about their profession <laughs> yes. and uh, expressing your your willingness to to become one of them, then you can seek mentorship again. My favorite card to play, actually. Yeah. Most helpful thing that that I actually uh, request a mentor every two years when I see a gap mm -hmm. in something that I need for my current project or for the one that I want to be on. So basically, as I do the gap analysis that you mentioned, I go, I research what gaps I have based on what is required and uh, list it out. And then I go to a mentor and I say to a mentorship program, actually, and I say, please assign a mentor that can help me master these skills. Very helpful, because yep. in my opinion, mentorship is the thing that can bring you most practical experience because you get to discuss things not only to uh, analyze them on your own yeah exactly that's the right <laughs> way of thing then perhaps the last thing is you should build a strong personal brand if you want to to switch to this profession uh, customize your resume mm -hmm. from this business analysis point of view because you already have this list uh, with skills your transferable skills, what you already uh, know, create a, some uh, account on LinkedIn, other professional networks, so to, to promote yourself. And step by step, you should, you should uh, create this brand. And finally, uh, we, we all, all, you mentioned that it took you 10 months. Yes. To, this from point zero to a project. To accomplish this transition from, from one uh, career to the another. So, it yes, it takes time and you need to have dedication. It's a great world and effort to do this. It's not that easy. It is a lot of switch, hard work. To switch to, to another profession. It's like a, for me to become a doctor. It's, it's impossible. That's going to take 10 years. <laughs> 10 years, yeah. <laughs> Us turning from BA yeah. to a nurse will take 10 years. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, it's very essential to set the uh, realistic expectations. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. And, yes. and uh, maintain patience 
and to progress through this, I believe, exciting journey. It is actually, uh, again, if I may share for me, it's been a blast this past four and a half years now that I've embarked on this journey, never regretted it. I'm always enjoying it. Um, quite stressful at times because as we've mentioned, constant learning, constant development, constant keeping up with the pace of the changes in the world. Um, so yes, thank you so much. This was very informative. And uh, we have a question that I would like to address right now from our chat. Are business analysts in IT companies real BAs or do you feel it's shifting to system analysis or technical PO roles? That's an excellent question. Uh, we, we all are, as I mentioned, business analysts. And uh, again, if you go to a LinkedIn and yes. just type <laughs> in such job business analyst, you'll see a lot of different business analysts. IT business analysts, BA slash system analysts, Analyst, data analyst, BI, BI, BIA ana data analyst, BI, which is very yes, popular. Yes, BI business analyst, financial business analyst. There are a lot of there are a lot of types of business mm -hmm. ana analysts, and it depends where you work, with whom your work work. If it's IT company, so you you should be IT business analyst. But again, as I mentioned, with these nurses that switch it to the business analysis, they are not system analysts. They just have a great domain knowledge and that's why they are very beneficial for the company true and that question we also have if the thing that is i would say more project team related the question also asks if we are shifting from a business analyst role into a product owner role um, here, I would like just to start the conversation, the discussion with the fact that um, I've noticed that on my project, I am not this pure BABOC business analyst as described there. Um, I am combining things um, that I need to work on and to do as a team player to achieve success, right? So we don't have, for instance, we don't have a project manager on our projects. We have a delivery manager and a business analyst, me, who combine different parts of that role. So we take on some of the project management responsibilities, right? We do it without questioning, am I a BA or a PM? No, no, you're a BA, but you put on a PM hat for certain things because you need to reach a successful completion of a certain feature in a week, right? So that's what you just, you just do it. But again, uh, you're lucky in this case, but oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> I am it, very it lucky with my project. It that on other projects, you'll be playing the role, not only business analyst, but Scrum quality, Master, quality, my favorite. quality assurance oh, professional. No. Yes. Oh yes, I've heard about it <laughs> yeah, as well. So te technical writer, mm -hmm. or uh, whatever. So well. it's a very diverse uh profession and uh, it depends on from the projects and the customer or the organization you work for definitely and um, if i may for me personally the thing that it is so diverse this role it's what drives me because i'm never bored yep i'm never bored i'm like okay what are we doing today that's, that's, a, that's a reward <laughs> of the profession yes you know how to do it let me give me two hours i'll read about it yeah. you know no i'm kidding we usually don't do things that irresponsibly but yes you have to learn you have to adapt you have to take on any role that is required of you today and that you can actually do okay let me check if we have uh some yeah we do we have one more question and my internet is not Responding, I apologize for the hiccup. Let me switch the Wi-Fi's. Or I will use my colleague here and take her phone to see the questions. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, moving on with the questions. Um, I wonder what is better, switchers from real life or from programming? What is better, switching from real life or from, ah, real life, that will be me, and programming would be your brother. So what is better? What is, <laughs> it depends. Again, there are a, a variety of business analysis roles, mm -hmm. as we saw today, and perhaps everyone can find their specific place to, to be fit 
to become a business analyst. Again, it depends from the, if you're working for the IT company or you're working in the IT department of the, some product, production company, it depends. Or mm -hmm. you're working in the, some ministry. Again, in the IT department, it depends. Well, the person who asked the question also made an additional question here, saying that maybe it's also, maybe it's simply, I'm sorry, I'm translating, maybe it's simply important that the person has a good IQ level. Yeah. I would <laughs> say EQ level as well. <laughs> Okay, Definitely. thank you so much. Uh, next question. Previous development experience as a business analyst is always good or are there pitfalls? Uh, I would recommend in this case to be more uh, business slash system analyst and find the project mm -hmm. to, uh, to use your previous knowledge for the for the best of the this person and to the best of the company because your previous experience should uh, award you and, <laughs> and that'll be a perfect world scenario but yes it yes. should it should it should um okay uh, i believe this is it with the questions uh before we bid our goodbyes uh, we would like to share with you <laughs> our link with the um, social media uh, listed that you can sign up to to broaden your network of fellow business analysts as well as your knowledge. And uh, I was interrupted by additional set of questions. <laughs> we are going back and not saying goodbye yet. Is EPAM ordering any courses for BAs or only master's program? Do you want to answer or can I start? Because I do start. have, um, well, EPAM um, has, I would say, uh, a very good master's program. That is true, but that's not the only thing uh, we can offer. Uh, from time to time, unfortunately, uh, this initiative is right now on hold, but we do hold a business analysis laboratory, which for me, as for a lot of my colleagues that we work um, with right now at EPAM, was the way into this um area right so that's another pass the business analysis laboratory another thing an excellent um way to start learning and start moving towards your career in business analysis is onboarding into our business analysis school which i believe right now they have the application open for the students though for the students of the university so everyone who is still a student is eligible uh, to apply for that program and this is concerning um ukraine i believe and we're not talking right now about the other countries unfortunately hopefully we will someday but unfortunately this is only for ukrainian um higher education facilities students and also um for students that is this is something that we offer within ukraine but i would say that this is very specific are the academic courses for business analysis usually they are offered um in a collaboration with the universities but but and we've done this with you actually in the room and one with one of your students uh, we had a student on board into a course at a university allowed by the dean uh, into our business analysis course while the student was not actually at this department so he was from another university yes um if you have something to add because i get very excited if we talk about studying so <laughs> so um i just add two cents to this if you get to to a palm then we will offer you uh, a variety of different courses and we will uh, help you to, to become a great professional. And even if you, uh, at some point of time, decide to switch to another, mm -hmm. uh, from another, from one profession to another, a pump will help you to become a, perhaps you'll, to become a great business analyst. And then we have a great mentorship program. So yes. uh, not only in business analysts, but in, every branch of professions, IT profession. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you, you'll be constantly uh, improving and gaining and new knowledge and uh, becoming uh, more, more suitable for different situations on the project and be more smart. 
which is always a good thing. Yeah. Okay, last question. Um, is business analysis moving towards the formation of a specific list of work or it absorbs more and more technical and managerial aspects and becomes a broader and broader concept? I like this question. Yes, as we can see from our today's talk, yes, it has become broader and broader, but along with this, we see uh, different types of business analysts now. It's like with the healthcare professionals. You, you, you don't have only a doctor that can make a surgical operation and mm -hmm. then uh, see into your eyes or, or do anything. So they have a specialization. The same with the business an analysis. So business analysis is a young profession and it's only several decades. And, but in our quickly changing world, 50 years, it's already a, a long time. And having this 50 years, we already have uh, dozens of different uh, specialization in this uh, profession. No, well, I, I agree, and if I may note, uh, I was uh, astonished about a month ago, a prompt engineer appeared as an actual profession. I thought it was a meme, but then I was like, okay, that's a real job. Then I took a course on prompt engineering, and I was like, it is a job. You can actually call this a true profession that brings value, and you have to, and you have to master and improve at all times. Okay, thank you so much, Andri. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much to all of our viewers today. And for those especially who gave us awesome questions, this was very nice and informative and we could give you much more info on it. Um, now on the next slide, you will see links to our social media. As I mentioned before, I started talking about it. You can broaden your net network by subscribing to our uh, social media platforms, Roomba and EPAM Masters, and you will get more answers there and more information and more knowledge will be shared with you on a daily basis. So thank you so much. Uh, this was an amazing journey of an hour. Hope to see you soon.